Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. It's finally time to start the FIA Manufacturer Series for 2021. Very much looking forward to this and I have to do the YouTuber thing, which is of course pick my manufacturer in front of your very eyes. And I decided to go with Mercedes with Toto Wolf backing me, give me the full support. I feel like me and the boys and girls back at Brackley can really do some damage this season. Let's see what we can do, essentially. You know, I've never signed with Mercedes before. Um, and I just feel like this this could this could be a beautiful, beautiful, not relationship, not friendship, but partnership. There's there's the word I'm looking for, partnership. But you have to do the you have to do this as a GT Sport YouTube. If you don't do this, if you don't show this part. Are you, do you even play this game? Like, do you even sign for you know your manufacturer if you don't show this bit? You got to do it. Okay, now we've done it. Let's crack on with the race, shall we? So round one, we are circuit. We at the circuit de Catalunya uh, Grand Prix layout. You see, there's 319 points on offer for P1. Don't worry. I doubt your boy's going to get there, but we can only try. Now everyone was back on in this. It was super super busy. So many people back on, but. Yeah, we're going to try and do our best, as we always do. And I'm going to show you right now what I did in qualifying. Okay, so this is very, very... It's a high-quality lobby, and I think, don't even think it was like split four. It was insane the amount of people that were on. Anyways, Slipstream. Uh, I decided this was quite important, so I got behind JR Calderon 963, the Spaniard in the Ferrari, uh, as they go wide through the first corner, uh, through the second corner there, just offline, not on the racing line that they need to be. Turn three nice and tight. I keep the wheels on the curb on the right hand side just so you can stretch the corner out here just try and minimize the tire wear minimize uh, the steering input brake just before the side above you there again still behind cold run I've got no interest in overtaking them I just want to use their slipstream and kind of pull this Mercedes along very good car in terms of oh cold run's gone very wide there through uh, turn five yeah the Mercedes very good car overall but it's not there's nothing you know specifically that the car is just the best app that makes sense it's just a it's a very just good all-round car but it doesn't like it's not particularly fantastic on brakes acceleration top speed tire wear fuel nothing like that it's just average or just above average on everything so oh we nearly lost it there through turn nine actually anyways this is why exactly i decided to stay behind calder on here because that ferrari is going to be much better in the corners um this car being an fr car the mercedes being a chunky boy uh, it's not too good around the corners but Regardless, this is going good so far. I think this is a pretty pretty decent lap. It could be better. There's a few moments there where I've kind of been distracted by a cold run going off, but that, that's that's on me. I need to learn, you know, to stick to the racing line better. Going through the last chicane and probably the most hated chicane in history. I don't think anyone likes that corner, do they? I don't think anyone enjoys that corner at all. Anyways, let's cross the line. And what we're going to set, we're going to set ourselves a 143.3. Not great, but not bad either. So we'll take that. Um, and by the end of qualifying, we're P12. So, not too shabby, kind of mid-pack. Could have done better, but, you know, we'll take it. It's, it's our first, you know, round of the FIA season. Not the strongest track for, for the Merc, I don't feel. But anyways, let's crack on and go straight into the race now. I had a quick check of the wang, and it's nice and straight and beautiful looking. It's exactly what you need. Bit of a fuel saving race this one, so you can see I've already put the fuel mixture on lean six for this. So as we are about to get this race underway, as the Spanish flag is drawn above the straight line there. Yeah, so fuel saving race on this one. So because of the, the changes with the pit lane at the moment, it takes about 40 seconds to do a pit stop here when you put fuel in. It is mental, and you'll see that as we go on. But the pit stops are not the highlight of this race. And there's an Italian behind us called WFR Della 121. I urge you to keep an eye on that chap because, yeah, Pwah. Pr pretty shocking some of the stuff he does. It's it's quite insane. But we're underway. I've got a Ford GT in front of me, uh, VQS NM1. Now, I've raced with him a few times. Very quick driver. I'm surprised to see um, the Ford GT. Normally, people go for the Mustang. And I can't imagine it's going to do too well on the fuel. So as we go through turn three then, starting on the hard tyres, all three tyres are available. Oh, hello. Look at that. Oh, hello. Hello, boys. <laughs> so those three are fighting. He's going through there. Oh, he's got his tail out there. My goodness me. It's only turn five, lads. Keep it keep it clean. Come on. We'll, we'll, you know, it's only the first lap of the race. Let's, let's try and get through this, shall we? Uh, anyways, 
as I was saying, yeah, free tyres, soft, medium and hard, you have to use the hard tyres. With well, the pit stops taking so long, you can either, if you're kind of starting outside the top six, you've got to start in the hards really if you want to get anywhere. Uh, and then put the softs on about lap 9 or 11. It's up to you. Anyways, uh, the boys and girls around us are still fighting quite hard for the first lap, I have to say. A little bit of contact uh, from the left-hand side in the fellow AMG. Um, some lime green. He's got a Seto Corsa sticker on the back of his, uh, on his car there. GT Sport fans just look in disgust. But anyways, uh, Ollie Racy behind me as well, actually. Another Ollie. That's, um, that's pretty cool. So we've got to find a way to get past these three boys, but not too worried at this moment in time. It's, oh, okay. That wasn't particularly great. Kind of got really, really held up there. And I think Torque here is going to be left out to dry a little bit. Bit of contact. And I've joined in the RG Bargy. Now, I don't think the Mercedes sees me here. Pushes me off the racing line, but puts his hazards on to say, my apologies. Apologies accepted, my friend. Slipstream on the back straight then, or the... Or the pit lane, I should say. Pit straight? I can't even speak. Right, Ollie Racing's got involved, overtook me on the inside. Again, lots of argy bargy people have got their elbows out, pushing their way through. And you're going to see the first incident, really, of this Italian chap here. As you can see, he just pushes me not once, not twice, but three times. And he just pushes me out wide, gets that move done. And this is exactly what he did. So he pushes me once, pushes me twice, and then just pushes me out the way. This this guy honestly was an he was a joke. This race it was ridiculously bad sportsmanship throughout the whole thing. But as the race goes on, you're going to see more of it. Don't you worry about that. So, anyways, yeah, here just completely forgets that I'm there. So I'm just like I'm not having that, mate. And and then like, again, he he doesn't care that I'm on the inside. Like he just just doesn't give me the room. Um, but thankfully, we managed to you know again get our elbows out and make sure that we keep the car there and he just ends up going wide and loses another position but uh, all's fair in love and war and all that good stuff right amg in front of us goes wide going through turn seven and eight i can never seem to get that corner right all those corners i should say it's a really really pain it's a real pain for me turn like gear three or gear four i'm not quite sure what to go in right inside here can we get a move done in the hairpin we look for it but then the mercedes shoots over to the left hand side kind of stops us from doing that now we've got the italian on our outside so let's keep an eye on him make sure he doesn't do anything suspicious like in the first one okay that's not too bad right cool he's gone then he's dispatched we don't have to worry about him for uh, a little while right going for the chicanes then once more now vqs nm i have noticed has got a half second penalty that's gonna cost him as we go on half second isn't too bad i think he he serves it on the back straight just after turn nine i think because he's not gonna serve it on this one but we get the second lap completed, 148.9. It's not what we need to be doing. We really need to be in the 47s. Right? The leaders, even if they aren't hard, will be 47s, uh, 45s, 44s, if they're on the soft tyres. And you can see the Italian there has absolutely yeeted another driver. Um, let's hop on board and have a look at this fantastic overtaking uh, move here as he just goes in for the kill and fantastic stuff there. Just completely and utterly destroys <laughs> the other guy. Comes from miles back. And yeah, hits him once, hits him twice. He's gone. Game over. But what difference does it make really? I mean, the, the penalty system is it, it's so soft right now. These things happen. They do. And that guy is going to keep doing it throughout the race. Trust me. Stay tuned because he's going to keep doing stuff like that. Anyways, P13. So you've only dropped one place so far. So it's not too bad. Uh, VQS goes wide there. I do think about the move on the turn on the inside of turn five, but fuel saving is still a big thing in this. So I'm going to wait until he serves his penalty, and then we'll go for the move. Try and you know use our brain, use our big brain, use some high IQ strat, and see if that helps us out later on in the race. Because when we go to pit stop, we want to spend the least amount of time possible refueling. As you can see, massive um, bit of oversteer there. There's a, I think there's like a glitch on the curb on the outside and it just absolutely yeets you if you go anywhere near the damn thing but yeah turn 10 seems to be a bit of a strong point for us actually we do well there anyways lap four then as we're going through uh turn seven and eight and we're behind primer in the mitsubishi evo brave choice good car here actually because the only the only place it suffers is on the uh pit straight that's the only place where it's kind of weak but i get a lot of slipstream here and i just use all the revs that I have available and fly down the inside and get a nice move done into turn 10 so that puts us up to p11 now uh, we'll take it 
Um, one net gain so far since the start of this race. And now we have the Mercedes in front of us. We also have Torque in the Nissan GTR, and we have a German in the Corvette. Yeah, so it's quite it's quite close at the moment. I think the top five are basically going to be they're going to be in an eyes distance. So you can just about see. I think you can see a red Ferrari there. That might have actually been P6. Sorry, but uh, yeah. You get the idea. So we cross the line in a 46.7, much better. Now the guy in the Mercedes, the ESP, the Portuguese one, is going to go for a move on the inside of Torque. Now I'm just going to try and follow him here. So I let go of the frontal just to save a little bit of fuel. There's a gap there on the inside, leaves the door open. I'm going to go up the inside. Uh, got to give him room on the inside of the apex as well. Again, a little bit of contact, nothing too much. A uh, little bit of rubbing goes. We go through turn two and turn three, but we managed to get the move done, and that puts your boy now up to P10. So we're in a top ten, and remember we are on those hard tyres. So we should, we should theoretically, second half of this race, you know, have a little bit of a comeback, and we should hopefully promote ourselves up. This is a really good start for us. We've been saving fuel, overtaking cleanly and safely. I'd like to think. Hopefully you guys think the same as well. And we're now up to P10. Right. Skipping ahead into lap 7, I stuck with this guy for quite a while. He goes for a move up the inside, bit of contact there, a uh, little bit borderline. He does get the move, a uh, little bit of contact, but, you know, I, I think he was going to make that regardless. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's moved up to P8. Now, I want to follow this guy in the Merc because he looks, he looks quite pacey. He looks like he knows what he's doing. So we're going to have to try and dispatch of the chap in the Corvette. I feel like the Corvette here really struggling. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the AMG. Um, but suffers from understeer a lot more, I think, when the tyres are worn. So again, I'm going to use all the revs that I've got available to me, and then go to left-hand side. Just watch when he breaks and outbreak him. As our Italian friend here, yep, <laughs> he's been following us the whole race, and once again, just pushes himself up into P10. So yeah, I mean, I mean, side by side. For me, it's more the fact that you just kind of push him off on the line on the right-hand side. Let you guys let me know in the comments what you think about that one, but. A little bit savage, not the worst one he's done, but yeah, that's a bit of a, well, questionable, should we say. Anyways, lap seven, then going through this goddamn chicane once more. Uh, the leaders, or one of the leaders, I think, uh, has decided to go in the pits. So there you go, see Ollie racing behind us as well, actually, and someone else has put some soft tyres on. So up to P7 now, 147.2, you can see on the laps five, six, and seven, all relatively close, you know, three, four tenths, you know, away from each other. So consistency was there. It could be a little bit better, but, you know, it is what it is. Lap nine then, still behind uh, the Portuguese guy in the AMG. Um, you can see Mohata had a half second penalty, so that kind of demoted him from P5 to P6. I can imagine the Nissan GTR struggles like hell around here. I can't, I would not have wanted to be in the GTR for this race. I mean, it's not pleasant to drive at the best of times, to be honest. So, driving on hard tyres, you know, nine laps into a stint in a Nissan GTR, that rear, the rear end just constantly feels like it wants you to die. It's simple as that. You know, no, I do not want to accelerate through a corner. You will now die. So, it's, I feel for him on this one. I got one second penalty there. Yeah, I don't know how. Um, well, actually, I do know how. I, I completely missed the corner, according to the game, and I think now, just looking back at that, I did. I completely and utterly missed the corner, didn't I? So that one second penalty is probably thoroughly deserved. So that changes things a little bit, as I plan to come into the pits at the end of lap 10. So basically, game plan now is I have to get past my hatter as soon as I can, because I want to minimise the damage that one second penalty is going to do. So we're going to have to push on a little bit. You can see those front tyres in that Nissan GTR just begging for mercy. The understeer hit then was just atrocious for him. As you go through the first sector, close, near, <laughs> nearly taking him out. I do apologise. Um, but yeah, we managed to get the traction down as we come at the exit of that corner. And we move ourselves up to P5. And the Italian behind um, pushes his way through there once more. I don't know if you just saw that on the radar. But yeah, he's up to P6 now. So he's managed to, he's basically been following us this whole race. I think he started P17. So he's, he's made good progress, but progress probably not thoroughly deserved the way he's made the moves. And they've not been good. They've not been great. It's been pretty poor from, from him, if I'm being completely honest. So he's going he's gonna to fly past us now. So is Mohata as we serve the penalty. Um, my thought process here was once again, let's just stick with these guys. I was a bit conscious that the GTR was going to slow us down. Because those those tyres on that GTR were far from optimal, shall we say? It's probably the 
the correct word for it, isn't it? Optimal. Yeah, let's go for that. Yeah, so far from optimal. You can see P1 and P2 are now coming in the pits. They start in the hard tyres. So I'm basically just going to react to whatever these lads do. So if they go into pits, I'm going to go into pits. So P4's gone in, P5 and P6. Let's follow him. Let's do it. Because we can stick with the slipstream and we can save fuel. Now this is important. You can see all the fuel on the left hand side. I had 30 litres left. The Italian behind us only had 24. Now we're going to sit in the pits here and you're going to see just how long these pit stops take. So I'm just going to, just going to leave it here and yeah, just 15 seconds, 20 seconds, still not the pit box, there we go, there we are, there's the AMG boys, there's the lads, there we go, go on, take the tyres off, put them on, uh, superb stuff, well done lads, oh, okay, we've got fuel in, oh yeah, of course, of course, anyways, I'm going to overfuel just, just a touch, just a little bit, just a little bit of more fuel, and uh, then the game predicted I needed, because of course it's taken the average from what I've done, and yeah, so we just put a little bit more in, and you can see the Italians now behind us. So those extra six or seven litres I had in the car there has proved absolutely vital as I move now up to P15. But don't worry, you know, this race has still got a long way to go. We've got still still six laps to go in this one. Um, you know, we're on the soft tyres now, so we should be able to push on. Now this is where you're going to see like a, not a Constantino effect, but you're going to see people that are at the front are going to drop back to us now. So we're going to be able to push on on these soft tyres and just, you know, go for broke and see what we can do. Now I expect in this hand GTR in front of us to be quick as, oh okay, right. Okay, brilliant. Thank you Mr. Italian Man. Thank you WFR Della 121 Another fantastic move. Absolutely superb stuff. You really are quite the driver. You are quite fantastic. The moves you've made in this video, superb. Nothing wrong with them at all whatsoever. You absolute piece. Anyways, braking. At this point here, uh, there's Blackpool. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> He's just murdered that AMG. I mean, I'm going to take the position, but... He's just absolutely murdered him. That was... My goodness me, what was that? What was that? That is... Wow. Okay, that was... That was bad. That was... <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> He's absolutely launched it there. Right, lap 13. Mohata has got a half second penalty. Once more... He must be cutting the corner uh, in lap 9 there to get that penalty. And the Italian there, again, showing his absolute quality and just pushing uh, my hatter off the circuit there. I am... Yeah, this is... All jokes aside, this is pretty shocking from this guy. Let's be honest. I've, I've seen some bad drivers in my time. But this, this guy's got the pace. He's very quick. There's no doubt about that. But to have the pace as he does and to drive like that, just not good, mate. Not good at all. You know, that is... That's pretty poor. Right. On the pit lane straight then. I just had a look at my fuel to make sure I had enough to push on to see if I could actually take this guy on the straight. So I used all the revs available for me once more. Breaking that 100 meter board. Uh, Going to go side by side into turn one. But thankfully, Mahata thinks better of it and I get that position done. Now, Popcorn, in front of us, the Italian, is, I think... He's either going for the no-stop or the one-stop. The no-stop is an option and it is viable in that Vision Mazda because it's so good on fuel and it's so good on tyres. But at the end, like now, you know, kind of lap 12, 13, on the final stretch, it really does start to suffer. So not the strat. That strat's not worked for them. Anyways, lap 14 now as we go through turn 10. You're going to see the Italian up to his old tricks again. Just pushes the Aston Martin out of the way. Just pushes him out of the way. Just one or two pushes. Just watch this. There's one. There's two. There's three. Pushes him wide. That's P11. Fantastic. Fantastic racing. Absolutely superb. Um, if this guy gets banned, I'll be so happy. I mean, it, it was just frustrating to watch. I felt so bad for people that were getting, you know, pushed away. Well, I got pushed by him. It was frustrating as hell. And just to see the penalty system do absolutely nothing this chap it was infuriating doing this race looking back at this it's even annoying me now I don't know how you guys feel watching this um, but it's just no it's not good enough is it like come on like Grand Transman made the penalty system lenient and he is just taking the absolute biscuit a clean overtake did anyone see that a clean overtake by the Italian watch that again that was superb he actually managed to overtake someone cleanly that will go down in the history books he's actually done it fantastic well done that is how you're meant to race, and that's how you're meant to overtake. But will he do it again? Who knows? May, may, maybe it was just a little tease. 
Maybe he's just teasing us with the uh, the good move there. Right, Oli racing in front of us. He's on those hard tyres. He's starting to really, really suffer. Uh, and as you can see, he's kind of understeers there. And he kind of lets us go in the end as well. So that puts us up to P11. So that's just what I mean. The positions are falling back to us now. Uh, we were P15. P15? P15? What the hell is that? We're at P15 after we pitted. But we're looking good and we're looking tasty. As we skip ahead now to the final lap of this race. You can see we've got 0 0.2 of a lap remaining so I can push a little bit more again full revs there but our Italian friend is <laughs> he's just pushed about the way <laughs> he's just absolutely pushed VQS out of the way just did not care and he's just sailed off into the sunset morally I don't get it I do not get how you can race like this like where's the fun in it like if you just push people out of the way so we actually get past two people that corner so we're actually oh no maybe just one are we gonna get the second person i think we're gonna get colder on there we go so we're up to p9 now but i don't get how you can be drive like that morally how can you honestly just sit there at the end of that race going oh, that was a good race i've really enjoyed that is it is i i, I don't i i can just ah uh, speechless i don't i don't know it, it infuriates me watching this back doing this voiceover just watching him do these kind of these moves i mean imagine if you're at the end of that you'd just you'd just be fuming this is a competition, right, to go to the world finals, you know, to race with the very best. And some of these people want to go there, and this guy is just plodding along, just knocking people out of the way. It's just ridiculous. So here he goes again. Oof. <laughs> I thought he was going to go for the Evo then. I thought he was going to go for the Evo. But he's going to do it now, folks. Watch this. Superb racing by the Italian once more. I don't know if you could quite see that. Unfortunately, I don't have his on board as a recording. Um, but he just pushed him out of the way. He's done it again. Like, he just pushed him out of the way. Now, you can tell uh, the Frenchman here is not happy. And he tries to retaliate. But unfortunately, the Evo was just, just having none of it. And he gets a snap of oversteer. Just manages to correct. A little bit of contact there. And he's going to cross line in P9. We're going to finish in P8. And the dirty Italian is going to finish in P7. <sighs> Great race. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Just a shame that it's just, there's always just that one idiot who just happens to ruin it for a bunch of people. Honestly, just just go, just don't play this game because it's infuriating. You know, the, the, I feel like Bradford has just said, look, we'll reduce the penalty system, you know, crack on, see how you feel. And then there's just that one guy who just ruins it for everyone. Yeah, infuriating. But there we go, folks. 226 points to end off the video. Once again, thanks everyone who's watching this. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you really did enjoy this one. Loving the fact the FIA stuff is back. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care, guys. Ta-da.